James Kaufman, World News Report Today. Today is June 29th, 2023, 1.30 p.m. Central here in the U.S. God bless you and yours no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. In breaking news, we just have had a large M solar flare with an associated coronal mass ejection. This one's going to be directly Earth-facing. It looks like it was an M3.85, according to GOES. Now, we're also running a C3 plus baseline, which I don't think I've seen in quite some time, if ever. This solar flare happened right around 1500 UTC time. That will be before noon here, Central in the U.S. Heading to Go Solar Ultraviolet Imager, we can see the large sunspot group, AR3354, and the explosion right around 1500 UTC time right here. So we will try to get a better look at that, but we're just catching the end of the explosion here on Go's. 18 and 195 angstroms heading over to lasco c3 we can see that they cut the time period out while this explosion occurred it's like they removed four hours of data here you can see the planet also jump wow heading over to our d region absorption prediction center we see the x-rays actually from that large m 3.85, 3.86 did strike here at 14.15. So the flare occurred just before 14.15, according to this data. We'll try to get a better look at the explosion. Uh, this was centered over the Atlantic Ocean, and the Azora Islands got killed, and some of the Caribbean and we can assume that everyone with ham radios or marine radios had some problems based on the heavy alternation here. Uh, we can also see that it just barely clipped Africa, Western Europe, the east coast of the U.S., and the north east coast of South America. Again, this started at right about 1400. And it peaked, it looks like, and these are via x-ray, about 1418. It does take a few minutes to get here. But these are moving at the speed of light. And it subsides by 1530. We're going to try to get a better picture of that flare. Noah put out another warning this morning about 3354. And said it actually had turned Beta Delta Gamma on us. However, it had done so last night, and I did include that in our nightly space weather update. It is directly Earth-facing, and NOAA's warning indicated that it had a very good chance of expelling an X-class solar flare, and a very, very good chance of expelling a M-class solar flare, which it appears to have done, although yesterday's solar flare is said to have come from 3340. I do want to correct something I reported last night, and everyone assumed uh, NASA is claiming that the CME that is Earthbound for the first was not from the solar flare from 3340 yesterday. It was from a filament eruption. Let's read that brand new warning that came out today. Geomagnetic Storm Watch NOAA forecasters say that a CME will graze Earth's magnetic field on July 1st. It was launched into space two days ago by an erupting magnetic filament in the sun's northern hemisphere. The glancing blow could spark a geomagnetic storm. So that is for July 1st, and we will see that on ISWA now. So everyone, including my audience, that shoved it down my throat before I was able to report it, because modeling doesn't happen, and has not happened on this flare as well yet. Well, this was not from that 
M flare yesterday on 3340. I didn't see how it could be. It's supposedly from another large filament eruption, which we saw several on STO from June 27th. We're going to take a look at STO currently and see if there's any chance we can spot this latest solar flare. All right, let's take a look. I think you can see the solar flare very clearly here on the 29th. You'll see it pop off in just a second here. It is now officially the 29th, and here it goes. There's one, and... There's another large one there. That was it, just as the feed cuts. Now let's take a look at the 27th and look for that film eruption on the northern part of the star. I will say, in fact, I don't see it. The camera was hit. Uh, this does not include all of the 27th. So there's a chance that this occurred prior to that film interruption. We'll take one more spin of things for the 27th. There is the big flare right there. And right after that, it goes to the 27th. You'll see the film interruption right as it flips. There's the big flare. And there was the eruption right there in the middle. The film interruption, they said, is inbound directly earth facing on the 27th. I will say that today's solar flare looked like it lasted much longer than they say it did. The time, Look at the time exposure there. And then as soon as you flip around the 27th, big explosion here, flip, bam, right there, dark filament eruption, earth facing on the 27th. So the big M solar flare, earthbound for today, the filament eruption that actually caused the coronal mass ejection that everyone thought might have come from 3340 actually came from that filament eruption on the 27th that we just saw. In fact, that filament eruption caused what you're seeing here on ISWA, NASA's spiral, from the 27th that we just saw. And we're going to have another one of these modeled coming right at Earth from Sunspot AR3354 as soon as they get around to actually completing the modeling. It usually takes them up to 24 hours. So with that said, it looks like we'll have a one-two punch, although they will be separated by at least 24 hours. And that would be the film eruption that we just saw and this fairly large M-class solar flare that popped off right around 14, 1500 UTC time. With that said, God bless you and yours, folks. Share, subscribe, and always remember, anything's possible in Bizarro World.